I am making a Crystal Beast deck profile. I really enjoyed Crystal Beasts when they were first released. And with the release of the structure deck, I thought, why not make the deck again? And I took it to my locals without really knowing what I was doing. And managed to go 3-1-0. The way that the, my games went at my locals, though, was a bit odd. Because first I lost... Uh, against Bestial Dragon Link, just because I just couldn't do anything because they kept swarming the field and kept getting gates. But the game went on so long that we only had one game, and I lost during time. And then game two, I won against Dogmatica Invoke Spellbook, and then. Game 3, I won against Black Wings. And then I was given the win for the fourth round because my opponent ha had to go somewhere else. But he, I'm pretty sure I would have lost, though, because he was playing Sprite for hire. But I still liked how the deck did. I did change the deck, though, by adding... or changing a bit of cards, but... Overall, I still like it. it I just need to learn more of the combos. To start off with the monsters, I play two copies of Crystal Beast Ruby Carbuncle. Ruby Carbuncle, I think, is the second most important, or se it's either the second or third most important Crystal Beast monster in the deck. Having the effect of when it's special summoned, you can summon as many Crystal Beasts from your spell and trap zone as possible. And then all Crystal Beasts share the effect of if this card you control is destroyed, then you can place it face up in your spell and trap zone as a continuous spell. Then I play one copy of Emerald Tortoise, Amethyst Cat, Cobalt Eagle, Ember Mammoth, and Topaz Tiger. Honestly, these are all played as just for names. They don't really do much of anything outside of just being names. Then probably the best Crystal Beast is... Two or three copies of Crystal Beast Sapphire Pegasus. Pegasus has the effect of when it's summoned, you can take a Crystal Beast from your deck and place it face up in your spell and trap zone as a continuous spell. But the reason that makes Sapphire Pegasus the best is because of the three copies of Crystal Beast Rainbow Dragon. Crystal Beast Rainbow Dragon can be special summoned from your hand when an attack is declared involving a Crystal Beast monster you control. If, and then while it's in this spell and trap zone, you can banish it to then search your deck for one of two copies of Rainbow Dragon. And summon a Crystal Beast from your deck with its effects need. And you can only use each effect of Crystal Beast Rainbow Dragon once per turn. And then I play two copies of the original Rainbow Dragon. Honestly, I really love Rainbow Dragon, but... It's unless they add more Crystal Beast monsters other than the advanced Crystal Beasts. Then I really don't think Chris or Rainbow Dragon will be as good as it used to be. If it ever was, because I don't remember how well I did with Crystal Beasts the first time. But Crystal or Rainbow Dragon does have use in this deck as when once you summon it, then you can summon one of the two boss monsters of the deck. Then for supporting monsters, I play three copies of Noble Knight's Shield Bearer. Shield Bearer is just three more copies of Pegasus, as it has the effect of you can banish it from your hand or face up field to then add a lo level six or lower wind beast from your deck to your hand. Not a wing, winged beast, a wind beast monster. Then, just because the deck doesn't really need its graveyard, I do play three copies of Dimension Shifter. I still think any deck that can get away with playing Dimension Shifter should. However, I'll probably take Dimension Shifters out once I have other cards I need for the deck. Moving on to the spells, I play one copy of Crystal Beacon and two copies of Galaxy Cyclone. 
Crystal Beacon is what lets you summon Ruby Carbuncle from your deck while you have two or more Crystal Beasts in your spawn trap zone. And then Galaxy Cyclone, you can target a set card, destroy it, and then on a different turn, it, other than the turn it was sent to the graveyard, you can banish it from your grave, target a face up spell or trap, and destroy it. The things, the only thing with this is that the Cyclones should be called by the grave and Harpy's Feather Duster instead. I just couldn't find my called by the grave for when I was playing in the tournament, nor my Harpy's Feather Duster. Then I play three copies of Rainbow Bridge. I really like this card just by the fact that it's not a once per turn effect. And this might be have the second shortest printing on a spell card that I know of. The first being Pod Greed. It, it just lets you add a crystal spell or trap from your deck to your hand. That's it. Then I play three copies of Awakening of the Crystal Ultimates. Awakening of the Crystal Ultimates can only be activated by revealing an ultimate crystal monster in your hand, which Rainbow Dragon counts as. And then you can activate one of two effects, where you can either add a Rainbow Bridge card from your deck to your hand, or you can summon a Crystal Beast monster from your hand, deck, graveyard, or spell and trap zone. So this is another way you can summon Ruby Carbuncle when you have your back row full of Crystal Beasts. Then I play three copies of Crystal Bond. Crystal Bond lets you add a Crystal Beast from your deck to your hand, and then you take another Crystal Beast from your deck and place it face up in your spell and trap zone. And then you can only activate one Crystal Beast or Crystal Bond per turn. Then I play three copies of what I found to be the most important card of the deck. Three copies of Rainbow Bridge of the Heart. Rainbow Bridge of the Heart, I feel like, is an amazing card for this deck. I just feel like. Crystal Beasts need a couple more cards like Rainbow Bridge of the Heart or more or Crystal Beast monsters like, I don't know, Crystal Beast Obsidian Shark. I don't, I'm pretty sure I made that one up. But they just need like better monsters or better spells and traps. But it's just like a pure version of it, so I, I know there's other versions like Invoked that make it better. But I like focusing on Rainbow Dragon. But Rainbow Bridge of the Heart has three effects, where as the non-activated effect, where during our main phase, you get one additional normal summon of a Crystal Beast monster, and then you can destroy a Crystal Beast from your hand or face-up field to then search for a Crystal Spell or Trap. And then its final effect is if a Crystal Beast is placed in your Spell and Trap zone, you can activate its effect to target one card on your, on your opponent's side of the field, return both that target and that and itself to your hand. You can only use each effect of Rainbow Bridge of the Heart once per turn, but doesn't say you can only activate one Rainbow Bridge of the Heart once per turn. So what I like doing with this is I will summon a Crystal Beast monster, destroy it to search for a Crystal Spell or Trap, then use its effect to bounce it to my hand and then an opponent's card, and I'll reactivate it. Because then it just counts as another shield if you get attacked. Then... Sorry about that, my cat decided to jump up in the middle of recording. Then I play one copy of Crystal Conclave. I honestly don't care for this card. Or at the very least I haven't figured out its importance yet. But Crystal Conclave has the effect of once per turn of a face-up Crystal Beast monster and monsters you control be destroyed by battle or card effect. You can special summon one Crystal Beast monster from your deck. So you can summon a Ruby Carbuncle and summon things back. Uh, yeah. And then you can send this card, or this face-up card from your field to the graveyard to target one Crystal Beast mo uh, one crystal beast card you control and one card on the field, return them to the hand. And you cannot activate the, these effects in the same chain. I honestly don't care for uh, Crystal Conclave. The main card I care about in this deck is three copies of Crystal Miracle. Crystal Miracle has the effect you can activate a spell, trap, or monster effect. Then you can destroy a Crystal Beast from your, your er, I can never remember if it's hand, hand or face up field, or if it has to be from the field. You can destroy one Crystal Beast card you control to negate that effect and destroy it. And then if a Crystal Beast is facing your spell and trap zone, you can banish this card from your graveyard 
to then place another crystal piece from your deck into the spell and trap zone. You can, or you can place one crystal piece from your hand, deck, or graveyard face up in your spell and trap zone. I knew there was something I was getting wrong with it, but the main thing I like about this is that it gives crystal beasts a go first option of being able to set up negates. Whereas that's the big thing I remember they didn't have before. And so this and that is it for the main deck. And some people are probably gonna wonder, where is uh Rainbow what was it called? Rainbow Bridge of Salvation. And then the field spells. The reason I'm not playing that in this deck is because I don't have the field spells that you would search for it. I still need to get at least one copy of Necro Valley and one copy of Zombie World. And also a win the Wind Charmer. That's why the extra deck is only 14 of 15. But once I get win, then I can toss in Secret Village of the Spellcasters. The and then I just need to get Zombie World Necro Valley, and then I'll start playing the card. Which, once I do get those field spells, I'll take out the Galaxy Cyclones, Crystal Conclave, uh, the Dimension Shifters. All those can come out once I actually have those field spells. But moving on to the extra deck, I play one copy of Cherubini, Ebon Angel of the Burning Abyss. This is only in here because you can make it using two level three monsters and just dump a crystal beast to the grave for so you have an additional name. One copy of Cross Sheep so you can summon back Pegasus if you summon one of the two boss monsters. But Cross Sheep was never really summoned as much. The main monster that I summoned the most was two copies of Genator Transverser. The only reason I was playing this card in the deck is because Geo. I know it's sad and also, but I did do a funny thing with this where I did take an opponent's Baron, and I thought that was hilarious. Then, for additional boss monsters, I play one copy of Appaloosa. Appaloosa was the main Link 4 that I summoned a lot, and then I also play the one copy of Boros Lord. Then I play, I just play generic Rank 4s that I thought would be decent. One copy of number 80, Rhapsody and Berserk, just so I can banish two cards from my opponent's grave. Dugar, so I can either draw two cards, skip discard one, skip my next draw phase. So I'm a monster back from my deck, but skip my next main phase one. Or double the attack of a monster and then skip my next battle phase. Then I play two copies of Abyss Dweller, just because there are a lot of zombies... Yes, there's a lot of decks that use grave effects at my locals, so Zom Abyss Dweller is actually pretty good. One copy of Silent Honor Arc just to take upon special summon monsters. The Goose Go if I need to stall or stall for a bit to figure out what I'm doing because I still don't, technically don't really know what I'm doing with Crystal Beast very much. Then I play one copy of Rainbow Over Dragon. Rainbow Over Dragon has to either be fusion summoned by using seven crystal beasts or by tripping in a crystal ultimate, which will be Rainbow Dragon. And then I don't remember, I haven't really played this, summoned it, but it has the effect of once per turn you can banish a crystal beast monster from your graveyard. This card gains attack equal to the banished monsters until the end of this turn. Then quickly affecting you tribute this fusion summoned card, shuffle all cards on the field into the deck. So, this is a decent card if you can make it turn one, because then when your pawn, or once you know you need to stop your pawn, you can activate its effect, shuffle all cards on the field back into the deck, and then they probably won't be able to recover from that. And then the boss monster deck is the Ultimate Crystal Rainbow Dragon oh, er, Overdrive. This monster can be summoned just by er, banishing a Rainbow Dragon, or my bad. An ultimate crystal monster and seven crystal beasts in the same duel where a ultimate rainbow or ultimate crystal monster was summoned. I wish they would just say rainbow dragon instead of ultimate crystal. But it then has the effect of while there are seven or more banished uh, crystal beast cards or cards or can it be cards? 
I actually don't remember if it's cards or just monsters. Okay, well, there's seven or more Crystal Beast m monsters that are banished. They gain 7,000 attack points. And then, if this card is not battle this turn in quick effect, you contribute this card to shuffle as many cards on the field as as possible into the deck. And if you do, especially on any number of banished Crystal Beasts. So one thing you can do with this card is if you have other monsters and they've attacked, you, your opponent would survive an attack from this card. You can then activate its effect, shuffle everything back, and then summon five Crystal Beast monsters and, to beat your opponent with. Or you can do, use it when on your opponent's turn in the same way that I said you could use Rainbow Over Dragon. But that's it for my Crystal Beast deck profile. Like I said, I still need to get Win, Zombie World, and Necro Valley. But once I get those, I'll do an updated deck profile with, with updated uh, performance with how I did with it. Because like I said, I did go 3-1 with the deck, but that's only because my, my opponent had to leave. And so I ended up going 3-1 instead of 2-2. But if you have any ideas how you can improve the deck, any decks like to be made in the future, or decks like to see face each other, feel free to comment down below. Thanks for watching.